Hi there. Welcome to adventure. You know, of all the different parts of the world I've visited on the trail of excitement, this is my favorite, Hawaii, paradise of the Pacific. We're not going to relax, however, under the tiki, because from here at Honolulu, we'll be starting on a halfway round the world tour for an international look at one of the most spectacular sports ever invented. Strength, skill, coordination, nerve, and split-second timing. These are the minimal requirements for riding 20-foot waves. We're going to share the surf with a shark off the coast of California. We'll see the world's best surfers in action from Australia and New Zealand's black beaches all the way to Florida. Before we're through, I think you'll agree that for sheer breathtaking excitement, the ancient sport of Polynesian kings is mighty hard to beat. One of the earliest accounts of surf riding was written by the famous explorer and navigator, Captain Cook. He discovered Hawaii, I think it was in 1778, and he described, and I'm quoting now, this sport as most perilous and extraordinary. Well, Captain, it was and it still is. And anything that's both perilous and extraordinary certainly deserves the title of true adventure. Riding waves like this was once the sport of Hawaiian royalty. Hawaii is one of the United States now. There are no more kings ruling the islands. Still, the great surf rolls in, 20 to 30 feet high, and there are still men to ride them. One scientist has computed the force of waves like this and decided that the human body just can't stand it. But somehow there are still people who ride them every chance they get. Even the big ones like these at Sunset Beach on the north shore of Oahu. Let's meet one of the surfers. On my right, Bruce Brown of Dana Point, California. There's excitement here the kind of excitement that comes from the presence of real danger. There's the force of the waves to contend with, the danger of being hit by a flying surfboard. Speed, exhilaration, challenge. These are what surf riders live for. look at surfing around the world in Hawaii because the sport was born here. Sunset Beach is only one of several places where you can meet the challenge of spectacular waves. This is another, Waimea Bay, and here comes a big one. more than a beach and a board to make a surfer. You have to be a good swimmer, as a matter of fact, a great swimmer. You have to know what to expect from the different kinds of waves. You need good muscles in top condition. But all these aren't enough in this kind of surf. You need a daredevil's nerve to try a 20-foot wave. the turn of the century, surfing has traveled almost everywhere, as we'll see. Our first stop is the coast of Southern California. It's early morning. There's no wind. 
Down at the beach, conditions should be just about ideal. But you have to get there first, and there are a few safety rules to start following long before you ever get your feet wet. These fellas are in trouble already. Malibu Beach, at a place called the L.A. County Line, is a surfer's dream. No wind means a smooth, glassy surface, perfect for riding. The only trouble for Los Angeles fans is that perfect surfing weather produces heavy smog. Well, maybe that isn't too high a price at that. As you can see, the California surf is nowhere near the size it gets to be in Hawaii. But the waves are well formed, and 75% of the time there's no wind before 11 a.m. Smooth water means smooth surfing. Theoretically, that is. Of course, California surfers do find obstacles to the enjoyment of their sport. Freeways, for example. No matter how good the surf is, getting to it can present bigger hazards than the waves themselves. Everybody comes to grief on the way to the ocean. This is Rincon Beach between Ventura and Santa Barbara, California. Incidentally, this entire episode of True Adventure was filmed by Bruce Brown, whom we met earlier in Hawaii. Bruce makes surfing his profession as well as his hobby. He's not only an expert with a movie camera, as these pictures show, he's also a surfing authority who lectures and shows his films all over the United States. Now, in just a moment, you'll see one of those rare sequences photographers wait a lifetime to capture. Watch very carefully now. Right at the top of your screen, there's a shark. shark in the water, there's only one thing to do, head for home the quickest way possible. Here's something else surfers have to contend with, surfers' bumps. They get them from kneeling on their boards paddling out to sea. Believe it or not, these are the surfers' version of a housemaid's knee. Speaking of bumps, there are...